Hiya folks, some people got a little mm, about the last video because they said I can't critique that book uh, Why Buddhism is True without having actually read the book and I'm not trying to provide a critique of the book or a review of the book of course I would have to read it to do that I'm just trying to say why I'm not interested in that sort of approach anymore and why I think that approach is a misunderstanding and I think it goes back to something I mentioned a couple of videos earlier where Koto Sawaki made that statement, we retain the use of tentative names. So that means that when we're trying to explain Buddhism, we explain it in the language that the ordinary people of wherever we happen to be trying to explain it will understand. And the ordinary language of you know, 21st century Americans and Europeans and people from that sort of stream is a, a mechanistic worldview that's steeped in materialism. So we use the language of materialism and mechanistic worldview language in order to express Buddhism these days, and it's what's so-called Buddhist modernism. But as you delve deeper and deeper into Buddhism, if you are honest with it, you will find that that's a I wouldn't say it's exactly a bait and switch, but it's sort of a bait and switch. It's sort of like, you know, I won't say it's aliens, but it's aliens, you know. It's, it's, uh, it's a technique that's used to express the teaching in a way that doesn't conflict with the people that you're teaching but it also is not an affirmation of that. So Buddhism wasn't an affirmation of the older versions of Buddhist cosmology that, that exist and that, that form the basis for books like this, and it isn't an affirmation of our contemporary cosmology either. It's something that's, that's quite apart from that, and I just wanted to kind of put that out there and say that this is something I've been thinking about talking about. But today's video is not about that. I've been thinking about the pandemic. Aren't we all thinking about the pandemic? And one of the things I've thought about this pandemic is that I want to survive it. You know, imagine that's your view too. You'd like to survive the pandemic. And somebody like me, given my age and health and everything, is probably going to survive this pandemic. And probably most of you are going to survive it just fine too. But some of us, you know, in this world are not going to survive it, and you don't want to be one of those people, I assume. So I was thinking about, well, why don't I want to be one of those people? And this led me to thinking about the Buddhist meal chant. When you are on a retreat, a Buddhist, a Zen Buddhist retreat, one of the things you do is every time that you eat a meal, you chant something called the five reflections. And the first two are the ones I want to talk about in terms of this surviving the pandemic thing. We reflect on the effort that brought us this food and consider how it comes to us. We reflect on our virtue and merit and whether we are worthy of this offering. And sometimes it's we reflect on our virtue and practice and whether we are worthy of this offering. Depending on whose translation you're using, I can't remember the original well enough to know which one is correct. But they're both useful. So every time you eat a meal, pandemic or not, something has put in effort and very likely things have died for your meal. If you're a meat eater that'll be obvious but even if you're a vegetarian or a vegan there are things that are dying to get you to, to give you nutrition. You know your carrots are dying, your radishes are dying, your potatoes are dying, the bugs that lived on that, the blood that they used to fertilize it, you know that's a weird thing if you don't know about that they use animal blood for fertilizer. You know there's all sorts of things that go in there. So just the fact of being alive means you are causing tremendous damage and chaos and pain all over the place even if you try your best not to. This is kind of the mistake, and maybe somebody will take me to task for this, saying this, but it's kind of the mistake of the Jains, which are a group that started out around the same time as the Buddhists, and they had a very radical view of this concept of ahimsa, which is uh, do no harm. And their ahimsa concept meant that they had to be absolute vegans, and you know some of them won't wear clothes at all because they feel that that does violence, and they wear a mask, just like we're all doing now, to cover their mouths, to avoid breathing in poor little 
bacteria and coronaviruses, uh, you know, and, and harming them. And they sweep the, the broom, they have a little broom that they carry and sweep in front of them to, to make sure they don't do any harm. And, you know, that's all nice, but even when you try to minimize it to that level, you are still causing harm. So, this is the kind of thing that will make a person who is reflective reflect on what, what do, why do I deserve to survive this? And when I think about it in terms of myself, I think about, and I've mentioned it on this channel, and you can go back a few episodes if you want details, but the fact that my mother died of Huntington's disease in 2007. Uh, that meant that I had, and still have technically, a 50% chance of dying of Huntington's disease. And if you're worried about the 1% chance, or for most of you, less than 1% chance you have of dying of coronavirus, think about a 50% chance of dying of Huntington's disease. If somebody gave me a choice, do you want to die this year of coronavirus or die in 15 years of Huntington's disease, I would choose the coronavirus, <laughs> you know, without a moment's hesitation. Not that I think there's a choice like that, and I hope God isn't listening and thinking I'm making that choice. I'd rather not die of either one. But that's how bad it is. It's a really bad thing. And living with this constantly hanging over my head, you know, made me realize that nowadays I'm kind of back to that. And, and my, my trajectory of this is that usually Huntington's disease symptoms show up between ages 30 and 40, you know, sometimes as late as 45. But if you get to be age 45 and you haven't shown any symptoms, it's very likely you just don't have the gene. I'm 56 and I haven't shown symptoms. And for the last, well, let's say 11 years, right, uh, it's, it's been a kind of thing where few, you know, that's at least that's out of the way. I mean, if you want to get technical, there's still people who develop it much later in life, but that's really rare. And so what happened with the pandemic is I'm suddenly thrust back into that, you know, thrust back into that mindset that I had up until I was 45 years old, where it's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, it's coming, it's coming, you know, and having seen what my mother went through, which was terrible, I don't want to go through that, you know, nobody would want to go through that. So now I'm thrust back into it, and it got me thinking the same thing that I thought back in my 20s and 30s and 40s, which is, I, if I'm going to be able to live, I want to deserve to live. You know, I want to be somebody who does something that's worth living. Now, this doesn't mean it has to be a great thing, like a grand gesture, like some grand, you know, skyrocket in the sky sort of thing that I do to prove I was here. But what it means is, at least to me, I want to be of service, you know, I want to be doing something that is good for the world so that when, you know, like they say, when you leave a campsite, leave it cleaner than when you got there, right? That's what I want to do with the world. I want to leave the world a better place than it was when I got here. And I've used the fact of this pandemic to kind of renew that vow. And specifically what I'm doing, in case you want to know, and I, I don't know if I've mentioned this on the on the YouTube channel or not, but, you know, forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but I've started doing more zazen. I've upped my zazen from two periods of half an hour or 25 minutes each to three periods of 35 to 40 minutes each every day. Uh, I'm working harder on, on reading a lot of these books and, you know, trying to figure it all out and, you know, reading all this stuff and I've brought over from my apartment to, to try to kind of get a, a better philosophical grasp on it and, and doing more of these videos and just trying to kind of come to terms with it that way. And, and to me, that seems important. You know, if I'm just going to survive this pandemic because I want to have more pleasure and avoid more pain and then eventually die anyway of something that, you know, most likely would be almost the same as dying of coronavirus, frankly. I mean, that's what a, a lot of people die from is just basically a, a flu after they get old. You know, I don't, I don't want to spend that time uselessly or wastefully. You know, I want to make it count. And, and as I say again, 
it doesn't mean making a grand gesture, but it means making everything I do dedicated towards making the world somehow a better place because the world is me, you know, and, and whether Brad Warner leaves the world or not, the me that is the world continues to be the world, you know, so, so I want to make sure that I'm not doing the wrong thing, that I'm doing something that's worthwhile. And I'm not going to solve the pandemic, so there's no sense in me sitting around pondering and trying to figure out the solution to it, which is the sort of thing that I do. I don't know how you are, but I spent the first few weeks of this thing trying to figure out the solution for it, as if anybody's going to listen to me if I did come up with it. You know, so uh, there's no point in doing that. The best thing for me to do is understand what my role in this thing is and do that to the utmost of my ability. That's what I wanted to talk about today, and I guess I talked about it. Maybe in my next video I'll do some more about the, the cosmology stuff and what I think about that, because I think that's an interesting topic, and some people seem to respond well to it, but I thought I'd better put this thing about deserving to live uh, out there first. So, that's the end. Uh, my PayPal and Patreon links are below, and that's how I make my living. And, as I keep saying, the donations are, you know, pretty much mm, more or less the same as they've been in the past. So, don't worry if you, if you need to drop out, because I know the economy's tanking all over the place and things are getting weird. I'm hopeful still, in, in, even with all that's gone on, that we'll, we'll get a handle on this thing and make it, and make it work so somehow. That's it for me. I'll be back the next time I'm back, and we'll see you then, and have a good time all the time.